medical practitioners are saving lives and people, engineers save communities. Any action which will impact on a significantly disadvantaged individual or community or entire nation it can be something as simple as doing building works for people who need assistance, to turning up and, and mentoring kids at school who don't understand the opportunities that are there in front of them, particularly in rural communities. It's about the human condition, it is basic, it's about people's basic needs, uh, food, water, health. Humanitarian engineering provides an opportunity for engineers across all disciplines to relieve suffering for those in the greatest need. Projects that are designed specifically around a human need or a community need, like the provision of prosthetic limbs for an individual. We challenge the validity or the potential to improve yesterday's tomorrow from a basis of understanding, problem solving, and I think that, that then in the humanitarian space, a lot of good things can happen or, or will happen. Maybe this technology could help you meet your vision, meet your dream. Provide that knowledge to the communities and, and, and provide them with opportunities to bridge the gap between where the communities are at now and what they see as their visions and aspirations for themselves. Yes, you know, this is what engineering should be. There are a lot of people who devote their whole career to humanitarian work and you can choose that career path and not many young people would know that. I'm Paul Collier and I'm the President-elect for 2011. A few years ago you might recall there was a major earthquake in Turkey. One of our senior engineers is a, is a world expert in earthquakes and was asked to go over and assess the, the structural integrity of the buildings that were left there. They discovered that a large number of the buildings had been constructed to an inferior standard and therefore were a lot weaker than they would normally have been. And so they were able to identify this and get a structural strengthening program going for four or five hundred buildings in Istanbul, which in the future will stop them collapsing in another earthquake. I'm Bill Lawson, I'm a principal of Sinclair Night Moods. So I've got responsibility across the SKM group. Uh, that is a global role in terms of what the company is doing or seeking to do about putting back into the community. Up in uh, East Kimberley in Kalanara, setting up a pre-casting facility and employing 30-something Indigenous kids and teaching them how to pre-cast, particularly pre-cast housing, um, in the sense that I think any Australian that is at all awake realises the huge need, the, the, the terrible situation for Indigenous housing in Australia. And it, would, it seemed to, to, to the Vegan Foundation uh, that there was an opportunity here to both create the employment and to create the housing and to see the dignity growing and the self-respect and those kids standing out in the front of the houses, out the front of the houses they'd built that were being opened by politicians and people. And to see those photos on the mantelpieces of homes and the pride that that, that brought into those families that was a good, very good project, and a project that has got a huge amount of potential. I'm Alan McLean, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Red R, and I guess I've been involved in international disaster response, both natural disasters and other humanitarian emergencies, uh, for the best part of 30 years, off and on. My role here with Red R, of course, is that we're involved in humanitarian action 365 days a year, involving engineers, but also involving people from other disciplines who find their way to the front line of emergency responses around the world. In Haiti, we mobilised engineers of various types. We mobilised particularly um, communications engineers who were involved in the restoration of satellite communications, without which the United Nations agencies were not going to be terribly effective. We were involved with uh, water and sanitation, clearly fundamental components of any response, clean water and the um, restoration of satisfactory sanitation. Without those two factors, you're normally facing a large health crisis. We had people in Haiti within a few weeks of the disaster and we've had people in Haiti throughout 2010.
Captain Merv Lindsay. I'm a, uh, a civil engineer by, by uh, practice and uh, I'm the um, incoming national president for Engineers Australia. One of the great stories in the indigenous community is this bushlight where they've delivered power to, to small Aboriginal communities uh, on, a, um, on, a, on an interactive delivery where the, the, there's a responsibility on both parties to, to make this a success. A woman engineer from uh, works out of Cairns for an Arab and that's that was one that when, when she talked about what what she did that was the one she that sprung to mind I'm sure she's done a lot of other things in her career but that, that's the one that she brought up and discussed with the most excitement and the most the most passion and they're the stories that I want to get out to the community and, and let them see what we deliver to to the front face of humanity of humanity The year will be focused around three things, educate, activate and celebrate. Uh, the first theme, educate, is focused around providing materials and I guess, learning opportunities so that a broader number of people within the education pr profession can understand what's involved in humanitarian engineering practice um, and that for those who are already interested and involved so they can deepen their understanding. The second theme, Activate is about connecting companies and individuals, teams of people, with the different pathways and opportunities that exist to get involved. And the third theme, Celebrate, is quite self-explanatory. Next year we have an amazing opportunity to recognise and reward the contribution that's been made through disaster relief and community development projects and other types of humanitarian engineering work. to see engineers as part of the solution to humanitarian issues. Yep. And, and we already are, but I want people to actually see that. There's obviously a desire to, to provide that help to the community, uh, and a passion, and that's one thing that comes out of engineering, is a passion. And if we can introduce that to, to the community and to the, to the younger people who are thinking of becoming engineering, becoming engineers, then, then we've really got a good plus out of the year. I hope that engineers who hear of other people's stories are able to get that light bulb moment. We need more people to be aware of the significance of the impact of their work in bringing improvements to the lives of people in need. We'd love to see an informed and transformed community here in Australia. Demonstrate that, the, that we see the responsibility of organisations such as ours to have a, a, a high level of social responsibility as well as the technical responsibility that we carry with the work that we do. But we're all in it together, and well we should be, and all the big contracts are all looking to how might we put back into the community in a technical sense, not writing out checks, but how can we do stuff in the technical space for beneficial effects downstream. I think I and my other peer, peers uh, that are engineers don't ever think that something is unsolvable. And I suppose that's in the humanitarian space, it's the same thing. We can solve anything if we're given the tools. <laughs>